Hey guys, welcome back to Telltale. I'm Emily, and it's that time again. I got me a box. Uh, this is a vintage box of 10 titles. It was $17.99. I got it on eBay. I will put the link in the description for you so you can find the seller. I thought it was really reasonably priced. I am hoping it doesn't suck. So we're going to do this video real quick, and I'll get this open, and we will see what's inside. Better get it open. Mm -hmm. There we go. Ah. Get that open. Oh, goodness. Yeah, my pink packing tape. It really is. Emily proof, I feel. Like, I need a lot of assistance to get into these things. Ooh, I see some gold leaf already. Ooh. Oh, yeah. There, he, there it is. Harvard Classics. Thackeray, Newman, Ruskin, Huskley, Huxley, Thoreau, and others. What stories does that have? Look at this book. Okay. Like, hmm. Okay. First of all, real shiny cover. Look at that gold. Real shiny pages. Look at that gold. This looks brand spanking new. Like, look, the little ribbon's still even tucked. All right, all right. Let's let's have a look what's in here. Harvard Classic, it's registered edition. Essays, English and American. It's got a nice picture of uh, Thoreau in there. Jonathan Swift, The Idea of a University, The Study of Poetry, Sesame and Lilies, John Milton, Science and Culture, Race and Language, Truth of Intercourse, On the Elevation of the Laboring Classes, of course Channing wrote that, uh, Edgar Allan Poe, Poetic Principles, uh, Henry David Thoreau Walking, James Russell Lowell, Amer Abraham Lincoln, and Democracy. Oh, interesting. So it's a series of essays by these guys. Cool. I do enjoy a good essay. You guys probably think I'm super boring because I sit here and I'm like, I love all this dry literature, but I really do. These are brilliant thinkers and I like learning what they teach me. All right, book number two of 10. <laughs> the Iliad of Homer. This looks like a modern library edition. Yeah, modern library. You can tell by the logo. A uh, bit in rough condition. This one had a little wrinkle, wrinkly pages here, but that's all right. You can just press those down and get those out of there. I mean, it's your very standard um, modern library edition. It's got the nice margins. It's got the beautiful layout. All their books are pretty much the same. Very infrequently do they deviate from a certain pattern unless there's like illustrations or whatever, but even then they stylize them very similarly. Very nice, lovely red cover. I like it, very nice. I do, I really do like modern library classics because they do have this beautiful, there's a lot of beauty and consistency, especially if you're a person who has like a very, very particular kind of library or a very particular taste. Oh. Good stuff. Good stuff. The Ford 300-500 Club. Sales tips from the pros, guys. Ford. Look at that gold leafing. Wow. Bright blue. This is actually kind of unusual. I've never seen a book that has that is this bright blue color that has a pretty consistent color all the way across. Usually these are much more faded than this is. So I'm kind of impressed by that, especially if they sit on shelves. Oh, look at that. Salespeople. I love cars. It's just a book full of car salesman stuff. After hours prospecting, guys. Look at that typeface. Look at that. Oh, wealth of information about Ford, selling Ford vehicles. A whole chapter on qualifying customer satisfaction key to truck sales guys look at look at those old ford trucks look at those bros yeah that thing's got a hemi no it doesn't 
Look at those the old vans. Look at those. Ah! Okay, I love this book just because of... Look at this. Look at the stylizing of that type. Look at this handbook. This thing is a work. This is a work. Just straight up work. An absolute unit of a book. The Silent Approach. I should read this for the next time I buy a car. Because I'm sure the gimmicks probably have not changed. Nice guys finish first. Look at that. Oh. Phone shoppers can be sold. Look at that. Look at that illustrating. Way, way back in the day. I'm digging the haircuts. Like, look at them sideburns on that guy. Look at them. The leopard print. Oh. Goodness. I'm going to, like, skim this whole book. I don't know why this intrigues me so much. I really like the design of this book. I feel like it's got, I like books with pi pictures. You guys already know that. I, this, this blue, this blue here that we've got on these. Oh, that's a beautiful ink color. Straight, it's like straight cyan, honestly. Almost straight cyan. And the typography, 300, 500 club. All the follow-up stuff. Oh, the typography in here. Oh, the style. Look at look at this guy's hair. Look at him. That guy knows about cars. You could just tell. <laughs> I love this. I suppose like I'm so intrigued because of course, of course, this this kind of literature exists. I have never seen it. Cause, you know, cars aren't my thing. Like Selling cars is not my thing, but holy cow, I probably like, if I ever need to sell books, like I probably could use it, you know, tips from here. Just appropriation, my dudes. That is a phenomenal book. I'm super, super excited that that exists. That's so dumb of me, but I am. I love it. All right, we've got Oh my goodness, we have a beautiful edition of Jane Eyre. It's my favorite book. You guys, I mean, it's gorgeous. Look at this. Look at that gold leafing. Look at that spine. Oh, oh, there's beautiful fibers in this front page. You probably can't even see it, but there's like little, little black fibers all through this intro page. Nice big margins for holding. This is not a heavy book. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Who, who printed this? Let's find out. International Collector's Library, Garden City, New York. Printed in the United States of America. Is it gonna give me a year or anything? No, nothing? Just gonna, just gonna do your thing, huh? Well, what a pretty book, that's beautiful. Just all the gold, lots of gold leaf in this box. I'm super excited about that. I love me some gold leaf. Bacon, Milton, and Brown. Again, the Harvard Classics. Look at them, just giving me Harvard Classics left and right. That is a really mustard yellow. Really mustard yellow inter inside there. Right there. There is a specific word for those pages, and I can never remember what it is. Like, I keep looking it up, and I just keep forgetting what it is. Look at that. Look at that beautiful, beautiful internal page. Essay, Civil and Moral, and the New Atlantis by Francis Bacon. Tracte on the edu on Education? I can't. Virgilio Medici by Sir Thomas Brown. John Milton, Francis Bacon are the three writers for in here. Truth, death, unity of a religion, revenge, essays or counsels, civil and moral. Wow, there's a lot of chapters to that part. Interesting. Very interesting. Oh, I'm going to have to read that. That new Atlantis for some reason intrigues me. Anything, any mention of Atlantis? Because, like, when you think about Atlantis, it's very mythos. Like, a huge part of mythos. So I'm always very intrigued by those sorts of things. What do we have here? Reader's Digest Condensed Books. 
These are actually super popular um, at thrift stores. I can't, I mean, you can't walk through a thrift store aisle and not find a whole bunch of Reader Digest books. And they're really not that bad. Like they just kind of condense a book and take like the highlights of everything. And basically beginning, some character development, climax, end. That's kind of how they break it up. This one looks like it's a holiday edition, thus the uh, holly and the greenery around the books here. Um, the Sea Flower by Ruth Moore, The Man by Irving Wallace, A Ship Called Hope by William B. Walsh, MD, The Third Day by Joseph Hayes, and The Land Breakers by John L. Eel? Eel? E H L E, Eel. So yeah, there's that guy. And of course, oh, so they left a the little sleepers in there. Cute. Oh, yeah. This is your standard Reader's Digest. Oh, some illustrations in these. Very nice. You know, I love me pictures. Very cool. Ooh, these ones are full color. Look at that. Fancy cameraman and everything. Nice, nice. There's a lot of colored pictures in here. I like the, I like the warm tones of that image. Very nice. It's like a grieving widow in that one. This one actually is not your standard. So it has a little bit more of a flourish as you can see over here. Um, the typography of that is a little more flourished. So it's probably just playing off of the uh, Christmas edition that it is. It's real fancy. Ship called Hope. Look at that. Wonderful. Beautiful full color illustrations. Who did these illustrations? Does it tell me? Winter 1965 edition. Come on, tell me who your illustrator is. I am not seeing anything about who the illustrator is, which is unfortunate. I will have to try and figure that out later. Like, it's not even in the intro pages. Oh! This is a first edition as well. Very nice. 1964, printed in the United States of America. Who is your illustrator? Well, it's not telling me who the illustrator is, but it's beautiful. Oh, just saw beautiful map. You know I'm a sucker for maps and books. Oh, so good. All right, looks like another Harvard Classics. Thackeray, Newman, Ruskin, Huxley, and Thoreau. Again. Not a repeat book, though. <laughs> Look at this picture of Huxley. Dude's holding a human skull. Like, that's a mood right there. I want to be that. That's me. And look at the sideburns for days, man. He knew what was up. The idea of a university. University life at Athens, sesame and lilies. Okay, so it's... Yeah, it looks like it's a continuation of that other classic. So like these collections go together. I'm gonna make sure they stay together. Cause you don't want them to get separated. Fred Hoyle and John Eliot, A for Andromeda, A Novel of Tomorrow. Oh, I should have to read that. Life Magazine says there are more than 2 million science fiction fans in this country from all corners of the nation. Yeah, there are. This is cool. So it's a bunch of sci-fi stuff. It's a sci-fi novel. Oh, I'm trying to get into more sci-fi too, so I'm very excited to get into this one. I believe this one has actually been mentioned to me and recommended before, A for Andromeda. Oh, I love that dust jacket. Look at that. Look at that dust jacket. That whole galaxy up in there. Beautiful little red tips on these pages top. Oh, Fred Hoyle. The Jacket Photo by Ewing Galloway. And Fred Hoyle is an astronomer and physicist, and John Elliott is a filmmaker, BBC television. 
guy, and he left that in 1949. He was a writer and producer of dramatized documentary, including The Golden Egg, a portrait of an advertising campaign. Okay, so he's a, he was a TV writer. And the other guy was a physicist, mathematician, astrophysicist, and astronomer. Wow. What a duo. Interesting. So that's their novel they put together. Oh, I'm so interested in that. That's so cool. The Breaking Waves by Neville Shute. Nefertiti lived... Nefertiti. Titty. Haha, <laughs> I'm naughty. Nefertiti lived here by Mary Chubb, Pennsylvania. Peanuts and more peanuts. And excerpts from a news is a sing news is a singular thing. My love affair with the state of Maine and from Lexington to Liberty. Interesting. What is this? It's like a collection. A best in books, it's called. From Nelson Dudley Inc., Garden City, New York. That's, look at that, look at that typography there. Ooh, pretty, such pretty, much wow. I see an illustration, copyright in 1955. The Breaking Wave, look at that illustration. I thought there were more illustrations. I like pretty pictures. Plus I like having pretty pictures to show you. Not seeing very many, but if I do find some, I found a map. There's a map. I like maps. Lexington, Arlington, Cambridge, Medford, and Concord. Huh. Look at that. All that Boston. Nice. Very nice. I do love me a map in a book. A love affair with the state of Maine. That's a nice illustration. It looks like like the title pages have illustrations that probably resembled the books that, you know, preluded them. Oh my goodness, there's peanut cartoons back here. Look at that. Oh my goodness. That's awesome. That was like such a turn. Okay, so that's what it meant by peanuts and more peanuts. I got you, I got you. But look at that, guys. What a time. That was not what I expected when I saw Peanuts and More Peanuts. I should have, though, because it said cartoon feature. Like, I was not reading the fine print, apparently. What a pretty colored book, too. Oh, my goodness. Look at that yellow pages at the top, yellow right here on the border. This nice red that contrasts it. That's so pretty. And, of course, again, we have some gold leafing there. Look at that. Ooh, metallic. Very pretty. Oh, so good. This, ooh, this one's pretty. The Book of Life. The Bible, Bible Prophet Statesman, number four. Okay, so this is a biblical one. It's got a beautiful, got some embossing with some gold leaf up there. Beautiful spine. Got a little... Christ figure here it looks like or some kind of priest maybe Moses no not tablets but he's holding a scroll so it's probably some kind of rabbi or some kind of priest possibly Jesus who knows wow interior interior look at that illumination there look at these the books over here the roll of books with all of these stories it looks like all biblical epics just pouring out of it that is just absolutely stunning I love sketches like that. That stuff like really, really makes me happy. Ooh, I see an illustration here. It appears I found Daniel in the lion's den. There he is with a little description, little, little transparency sheet here that gives you a little bit about Daniel in the lion's den. From an oil painting by Edwin John Prite. Pritey? Pretty? Painted expressly for the Book of Life. Man, these are some glossy pages, guys. You don't find a lot of books that have glossy pages, but here's here's volumes for interior page. Boom. Look at that. Look at that typography. Beautiful border. Simple and elegant. Copyrights 1923, 25, 34, 40, 43. 
Wow, got a lot of copyright dates on there. The new Victory Edition. Clearly meant to be a giftable. To and from, right there. The nice little preface there at the beginning. Goes through the prophets and the exiles. Oh, we got a picture of Jerusalem here. The lower slopes. Look at that. Holy camoli. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. I wonder if it does that through the whole thing or not. So this just, yeah, it does. Shows you some sheep. Sheep in a field. So it kind of gives you like, it's literally just a collection of all the prophecies from the prophets in the Bible. And then it pairs it with images that show and describe what's being talked about. Like I have this wilderness of Judah, as they call it, where it kind of shows you on the banks of some kind of small oasis it looks there. Right by the Mount of Olives, it says in the paragraph. So it's just all these parables and various uh, various prophecies just kind of collected into a one work, or a series of works rather, because this is book number four, the beautiful hill country of Lebanon. I wanna show this book too. Look at that beautiful oil painting, gorgeous. I don't see remnants of any kind of descriptor or anything on this page, maybe previous? Yeah, the prophets, Zephaniah, Joel, Obadiah, and Hosea. From the Freeze in Boston Public Library, Boston, Massachusetts, by John S. Sargent. From a copy print copyrighted by Curtis and Cameron, Inc., Boston, Massachusetts. So it's a beautiful oil painting. Yeah, lots of great photography in here. These margins are nice and big. The typeface is not consistent. Like, it's a consistent typeface, but the point size is different and not, like, from various points. Because, like, right here, it looks like it's probably 12-point font. Here, it looks like it's 10. Much smaller. And then they went back up again to a larger point size for this page. And, of course, then they're going back down to the 10 for all of these different prophecies. Oh, this is interesting. So here's the Sistine Chapel detail. Detail of the Sistine Chapel ceiling. So that's gonna be on this next page. Oh yeah, there he is, Isaiah. Well, interesting. This is so cool. Babylonian seals, got a picture of those in here. I don't wanna give you everything. Babylonian books. In the old read language, or whatever they call it. Some kind of runic language. So they have a lot of like historical pieces, a lot of oil paintings. They have some Babylonian carvings and things. It's probably, of course, relate to the prophecies of Isaiah when Babylon was a great enemy and oppressor. Prophecies of Micah. Got some more big old lion that's really cool I like that I like how they did like those reliefs on bricks so interesting of course like so yeah it's pairing like these historical events with pictures of the places so you can like see what this area like what area in this thing is being described so the metaphors make better sense oh that's so interesting giving you historical backgrounds on things. Of course, Egypt with the Sphinx and the pyramid. So it's kind of like showing you images of the cultural significance. That is so cool. I really like this. This is great for anybody who's into biblical epics, prophecies, Anybody who loves Jerusalem for any reason whatsoever, you're getting a great deal of history from a lot of these because it does give you a lot of background on what was going on historically, not just through via myth. 
Oh, so cool. I like it. There are a lot of images in here. That's really cool. I don't want to take up too much. So yeah, that is my haul from all these books that I got. Again, I will put the link in the description. Thanks for joining me. These were pretty awesome. I'm very excited. I actually think I'm going to start reading this A for Andromeda very soon here. So that's, that's going to be on my list for sure. And the rest of these I'm going to be browsing, of course, because I always do what I do. All right, guys, thanks for joining me. It's Emily with Telltale. Like, subscribe. Let me know what book hauls you've had lately. If there's any that you've come across, either vintage books, garage sales, thrift stores. You know I'm a big fan of supporting local nonprofits. So, of course, I'm hitting up thrift stores all the time. And, of course, I like to get with these small sellers online because, seriously, they have great taste. These were all hand-picked, random hand-picked 10 books. $17.99, like, you can't go wrong. It's good stuff. I will see you guys next time. Bye.